Blog Talk Radio. Hi, and welcome to Linda's Conscious Talks, and I'm your host, Linda Summers, and we've got another great show for you today. Deanne Adamson is on our show today, and she will actually be on again Monday and Thursday and the following Thursday, and our topic today is Recovering the Psyche After Addiction. And so for any of you um, who have not been uh, had a chance to listen to the shows, I'm going to give a little bit of background about Deanne before we get started and bring her on to the show. Deanne Adamson is the founder of Being True to You, Integra- Integrative Recovery Coaching, helping individuals and families get their life back so they can achieve their recovery and life goals. Deanne has a master's in mental health counseling and a background in academic psychology, philosophy, and theology in psychotherapy and personal development, family and child services, and judiciary victim advocacy. She has personal experience with addiction and recovery and studies closely the process of the change for any human being. Deanne is is pioneering the new era in addiction recovery. And with that, I'd like to welcome her to the show. Hi, Deanne. Hi, Linda. Thank you so much for the introduction. Pleasure to be here with you again today. You're welcome, and thanks for being here. And I want to let the, um, everyone know, too, first of all, I'll give you a number. If you have any questions for Deanne, please call in to 347-850-8423 with any questions you have. And there's five, um, well, actually, there's probably six, seven points of interest that we'd like to cover, but we only may get to three. And so those are connecting with your true self, discovering meaning and purpose, disentangling the self from addiction, cognitive restructuring and enhancement, emotional stability, physical health and healing, and spiritual awareness and alignment. And the three that we're going to tap in today um, are connecting with your true self, cognitive restructuring and enhancement, and emotional stability. And if we have an opportunity, we will tap into the other ones. And hopefully those will kind of fall in as we're speaking um, little by little. Uh, so just for any of you listening out there, that's what we're going to that's where we're going to guide this conversation today. So really beginning with that, Deanne, connecting with your true self, I think that's the basis of life, you know, that in, in anything we do, we have to really connect with what's true for ourselves. Yeah, absolutely. When I named the business five years ago, I don't think I quite realized the depth of the company name. But as I have taken this journey over the last five years, I have really come to realize that it does all start within ourselves absolutely well i didn't even know that being true to you that's really interesting i love that because it was so (laughs) was it more about you being true to you or really an essence of everyone including you being true to yourself Mm -hmm. yeah there's this process of like uh differentiation of the self and you know tuning into the true self before you can integrate with everyone else you know, before you can integrate with the whole. And that certainly is a big part of coming out of addiction is identifying, you know, who am I and what is my inner uh, heart telling me? What is my higher wisdom? What is my inner guidance saying, you know, and where do I stop and others start? And so really differentiating the self before the integration process is really important. Integration can't happen until that process of, Uh, differentiation happens. And so when we talk about connecting with the true self, we're talking about, you know, connecting with the authentic self, at least as authentic as a person can be with their level of current awareness. Uh, We might be talking about, you know, the most awakened self or the higher self, the actualized self. I think that there's many ways that we can identify that this is something we can look at today is is what does that mean to connect to the true self and and how does the person do that absolutely yeah yeah because people are going to be wondering you know how do you really connect to your true self and um, I think that uh, is such an important aspect and to dive into following your heart and really tapping into what sings to you as opposed to we, we I, I feel that we allow so many outside circumstances to um, cloud our judgment or cloud our decisions. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Well, and I, and I think the first thing to really understand when you know you're being true to yourself is to know that you know you 
you just start from where you're at. You can only be as true to yourself as you know how to be, as you are aware and as you have actually cultivated. And so I think anybody at any moment of presence can tune into themselves and tune into their heart's desire or, again, their higher consciousness. And through the daily awareness, the daily mindfulness and practice, you get more tuned in and a lot stronger in your ability to read, you know, your higher self. So I can go through several tips, you know, to assist in that. Ultimately, yeah. the, the, the two teachings that I always talk about are consciousness and practice. So you can keep it simple and just know that through daily consciousness, through daily awareness um, to the true self and to the most authentic self, outside of all of the conditioned beliefs and the things that have been, you know, put upon us of how things should be and outside of all the other voices in our head that are sometimes clouding our true voice, it's just coming into ourselves and choosing to connect with the true self and then practicing. So the two teachings I would go back to are consciousness and practice, but I can certainly go into a few more details if you'd like. Well, and I think just going back to consciousness, because I'm not sure if a lot of the listeners really know what you're referring to when you speak of consciousness. Because it's really, we're talking about where people are at, and some people we don't really know because of the listeners that are listening where people are really at. So when you refer to consciousness, what are you referring to? Well, consciousness is your ability to be awake in in this default world. So you know, we come into our human experience and we have some degree of consciousness. So I guess you could say wakefulness, um, alertness, awareness, our awareness to our five senses, our awareness to our outer world and our awareness to our inner world. So we all have a degree of consciousness that would be maybe different from other species, um, animal species and plant species on this planet. Humans have their own degree of consciousness and then each person has their own degree of consciousness. So I would just define it as awareness, alertness, wakefulness, uh, an ability to track the inner and outer world. You know, what is going on in my outer world and what is going on in my inner world. So somebody that might be unconscious is completely unaware of the connection between their inner world and their outer world. And often walking through life blindly, not realizing that the events that are happening and what they're attracting may be a direct reflection of what's going on inside of them. So consciousness is understanding the relationship between the inner world and the outer world. And then even deeper than that is understanding, you know, what personal powers I have or you have to find alignment between the inner and outer world and to take responsibility for each uh, experience or event that's coming up that might be unfavorable and always being able to ask that question of, like, what did I do or not do to attract this particular situation, and what can I learn from this situation so that I don't attract it again? And furthermore, Mm -hmm. if I use my intentions more deliberately, how could I attract more ideal outcomes? Right. So it's really it's the the consciousness being the outer world, being the energy, because we're all vibrating, you know, uh, energy beings. So in that vibration of... Um, attracting from the inner to the outer would be attracting the energy of wherever you're at in alignment. If you're out of alignment, you're unaware of why you've attracted things in. Yeah, exactly. And when we talk about, you know, being true to ourselves, you know, I think we start that way when we're born, but through our life, we become very conditioned by the people around us, by our relationships, by society, by our culture, um, by media, um, by marketing campaigns. And so as we go through that, it's easy to lose ourselves, you know, and become disassociated from um, what it is that we're really here for, what it is that our heart is calling us for, maybe what our life purpose is for. And so, um, yeah. So the outer world, would it just be the circumstances of society or parents and things like that really um, uh, taking us on a, a different journey as to opposed to what it could be something different had we not you know, had those experiences? 
Yeah. I guess the way the way that I see it is when we're looking at the collective consciousness or the collective material world yes. that we're all a part of, if everybody is associated from themselves, we're all kind of wandering aimlessly in this world trying to find purpose and fulfillment and happiness and satisfaction in life, but we're all disconnected. And so when we talk about being true to you and connecting to the self, it's each person's responsibility to go in and ground themselves in love, to ground themselves in light and forgiveness and acceptance, abundance, all these beautiful teachings that we've been taught throughout history. And then through that inner space, that strong foundation that we all have within us, then coming into the outer world to integrate together. But when we just come out and we try to integrate together and everybody is kind of disconnected from their own inner uh, spirituality, you know, and there's a disconnection between then the psyche and the soul, it is much more difficult for us to gain traction. And what we do, and we do this in the addiction treatment world, is we're trying to find the answers then in that paradigm of disconnection. So we're working together and we're trying to find the answers in the external world when really the answers right. are all within us. And if we can all ground ourselves within that space and then come together and work from that place of depth, of love, of purpose, of a, of a deeper understanding of why things are the way they are, we're going to be much more productive. You know? Right. So you really can't find the solution where you're at is what you're really saying. It's really, really mm-hmm. difficult to that. So then the practice part comes in. What is the practice part of aspect of that? Well, if we're looking, you know, still at, you know, connecting to the true self, the practice could be the daily awareness in general. It could be the practice of self-love, you know, self-care, self-compassion, mm-hmm. uh, humility, yes. you know, forgiveness. It could be the practice of uh, tracking inner guidance systems. Each individual has a bunch of inner guidance systems um, such as, you know, gut feelings or instincts or their heart's calling or, you know, their value system. Um, you know, the body and the emotions in general are speaking to us. And so we have all these different uh, avenues of inner guidance that we can start to open up to. So just the mindfulness of paying attention to that. A lot of times we know the answer. Anytime we want to stop and say, is this good for me or not good for me, our heart gives right. an immediate answer. So we, we know that, but the practice is just taking the time to actually do that and recognize that we're either in alignment with our heart or not in alignment with our heart. Even if we're choosing, you know, the the donut over the vegetable, you know, just recognizing yeah. that, yeah, my heart might be calling, you know, for the plate of vegetables, but I choose to have a dessert right now. That's my choice. But just being aware of that and being aware of what the inner guidance system is saying, and certainly when the inner guidance system starts to speak a little bit louder, you know, recognizing that that is a more serious notification to pay attention to. You know, the body will actually start aching. The emotions will actually start speaking out a lot lot louder. Um, Things in your life can even start breaking apart and conflict start happening. So there's so many inner guidance systems around us that are speaking to us. So the practice is paying attention to this, being aware of this, and, and tune into this. And again, even if we choose against our heart's desire as we often do just being aware of that and acknowledging that because the more aware we are the easier it is for us to start to make better choices down the road well and that's then, such a know, great place to start anyway you know mm-hmm. is mm-hmm. one i mean i think that recognition and being aware of a situation that's the first step i think because it's the beginning because at least now you're tuned in to being aware where maybe you were really unconscious before that you weren't Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then two other important things when connecting to the true self. I mean, one of them is following your passion, following your dreams, mm-hmm. you know, really getting in the flow, understanding what flow activities are, um, and following, you know, uh, your drive, you know, like what is it that really drives you underneath, you know. A lot of times we think we need something to get what we really want, but do we? For instance, a lot of times we're manifesting money and that's what we want, but is it money that we want or is it something else that we want? So we often right. put barriers between ourselves and our true self and what we're going after because we have been conditioned to believe that we need those things to get where we want to go, but understanding that we can just go straight for our passions, whatever it is that we want, 
opening ourselves up to that and following that which feels good. And then the other part of um, connecting to your true self is your strength of character. I think this is this is huge, you know, really developing a character. And when we talk about practice, this is certainly something we can all practice is being in integrity with ourselves, with others, being authentic, being vulnerable, practicing self-reliance, reliability, good judgment, impeccability. We could just go on and on. Empathy. So all these character strengths are another way to develop and, and uncover the most authentic true self. Mm-hmm. Well, I'd like to go back because what if that person – um, is not aware of what their dreams are. How would you begin from that aspect? And that's if usually where it starts. Really have any I mean, idea. Yeah. Especially coming out of an addiction. I mean, that's where it starts. Right. Most people, especially coming out of an addiction, are going to draw a blank. When you ask what they want, they will typically say what they don't want. You know, I don't want to be sick and that's tired true. anymore. I don't want to lose money anymore. I don't want to hurt anymore. And so it, it is a process of even opening up to the idea that there are possibly dreams out there. So you would start with wants, with needs, and with values. You know, what what Mm -hmm. is it that you want? And just trying to get over that hurdle is is the first step, moving from what I don't want to what I do want. And then you start small. I mean, we do know that we want to feel good in our bodies. We do know that we want to have peace and less anxiety. We do know we want to have motivation and energy. So you would just start with where you're at take one step in that direction, it's like Maslow's hierarchy of needs. You know, once your lower need is fulfilled, then you can move Mm -hmm. to the next need. And so it is hard to think about dreams when you don't have a place to live and you don't have money and you don't know what's going to happen, you know, where you're going to get your next meal, let's say. But as we start to walk that path and identify what is my most pressing need, my most pressing want or desire, and move in that direction, it's like that world starts to open up. And on the other side of each achievement, there's another desire, there's another goal. And before you know it, you start to dream again because the confidence to achieve starts coming back. And in the unraveling of that process, it's easier to start to see the bigger picture. It's, it's always in there for all of us. We all have dreams, but they have been covered with um, a lot of baggage. <laughs> And sometimes yeah. people do feel a little bit hopeless. And again, I can tell you from working in the field of addiction so long that uh, most people in or coming out of addiction have a hard time with that. So if you're one of those people, you know, not to worry, that's what addiction does. It erases your connection to your true self, to your passions and to your goals. And um, through the recovery process, through the awakening process, it starts to come back. Yeah, and what I think is so wonderful is that you guys, that what you're doing is you're tapping into that because they probably haven't ever been asked, what is it that you really do love to do? What is it that you really desire in life? I mean, you know, I just don't think people really ask that of other people very, very often, or if, if not at all, or, you know, parents of children and things like that. We just get so busy in our day-to-day life that, you know, uh, working and things like that, we just don't ever have those conversations. So I think what you're doing is absolutely wonderful, really tapping in and asking them. It's a whole different way of what you're doing than the typical addiction recovery, where it is talking about what's going on and what's the, you know, what's happening and what you shouldn't be doing and all this and never really diving into really the desires and the wants of another person, which kind of leads us into the cognitive re- um, structuring and enhancement. Mm-hmm. The thought, and that, that, that thought restructuring. So, yeah, use that word, you know, basically we're just talking about getting the mind back in shape. You know, after Mm. addiction, the mind, uh, some people use the word hijack, some people don't like that word, but metaphorically it certainly makes sense. It feels like that for a person. So after a person has gone through an addiction, short or long, the brain does seem to be hijacked and conditioned to serve the addiction. It's no longer serving the person uh, and the person's well-being. It's serving the well-being of the addiction. And so to recover the psyche, you know, psyche just meaning the totality of the human mind, consciousness and unconsciousness. So to recover the psyche from addiction is is an art form. There really is a science to it. It's not just about I'm going to go through treatment and, you know, put walls between me and my 
drug habit or me and my, you know, addictive habit so that I cannot use, that will not work. Your brain actually has to go through this um, restructuring process and observe and identify all the areas within the mind that are attached to the addictive patterns and are attached right. to the addictive thinking. And honestly, when we look at the way that our culture runs, these addictive habits are starting from childhood, you know, through mm-hmm. our, really, honestly, our pacifiers, our blankies, our candy, our yeah. video games. Yeah. I mean, we're teaching it's ourselves very young. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Yes, and so we're teaching ourselves very young to soothe ourselves by using something external and by doing right. that, constructing these addictive patterns very young. And so the the more extreme addictions are actually, in my mind, quite favorable because it magnifies what's going on in the mind and it gives that person an opportunity to do the work within their psyche to transform and transcend, meaning just elevate, you know, beyond those addictive patterns. And so, right. you know, a definition that I can share for cognitive restructuring and cognitive enhancement is, is the process of becoming aware of your mental processing system and acknowledging addiction-related thought formations with the intention of replacing them with a more optimal, accurate, and recovery-supportive mindset. So, you know, this is what we're doing with integrative recovery coaching. It's not only are we connecting with the true self and we're figuring out what your biggest drive is, what your reasons for sobriety are, and really giving depth to recovery so it's all worth it, but actually understanding the science of how to separate the addiction mindset um, from the recovery mindset and seeing the difference there. And when people understand this, there's so much personal power that's being... um, unveiled and and just through that it it gives a lot of excitement and hope and confidence uh to the experience when you see how to actually do it and if we got time i can go through some of those tips here if you if you'd like well we've got about seven minutes but um what i i so i'm not sure how long that would take but also getting into the emotional stability but what i also what came to me when you had said that though is that knowing that there's a difference between the two I think that's huge. You know what I mean? Like I don't think people really take and look at that as as um, separating those two out. So we take the mind as one entity, which it is, but really separating that addiction from the mind of the of that addiction from the mind of I guess the desire and and what we truly want and in, in coming into our own. So I just had to throw that out there because I thought that was just really. Uh, dynamic statement, you know what I mean, that really hit the point. So, um, yeah, so if you want to give yeah. a tip on that. Um, yeah, and give a minutes. quick tip, you know, I think that there's kind of a myth in people's minds that are coming out of an addiction, and it might even be the addiction mindset fooling the person into thinking that they're actually going to change, but there's this idea that uh, choice and willpower alone will allow somebody to get free from addiction. And it does work for some time, but it doesn't work in the long run. You know, I've said before, people get, we're really good as a culture at getting sober. Staying sober is a whole different art form. And what I see is that, yes, we do have a lot of choice and power in our intentions. We have to do a little bit of deeper work and understand how our thought formations are manifesting. And for instance, you know, what what thoughts, uh, beliefs, um, and perceptions and stories are we holding on to that are serving the, the addiction and everything that is a representation of that addiction, such as the resentments and the anger and the grudges and the pain. And, you know, we create this whole story in our brain that validates why we are using our addictive habits to cope. And in order to stop using those habits, we actually have to go into our brain and start to observe what that story is and start to disentangle it and pick apart the belief structures or the thought patterns or, again, the perceptions of what is possible and start to optimize those. And there's so many personal development programs out there and avenues to do this. It's certainly something we specialize in, but really, again, it just comes down to daily consciousness and daily practice, observing the mind and and putting a filter on the mind so that you're filtering out the negative, inaccurate, false thoughts and bringing in the positive, accurate ones. And don't you feel, too, I think a lot of it has to do with their why. 
I think why is is true for everything. It's like why is their why of why they really want to um, recover, why they really want to stay sober, why they really want to make this change. I think that's huge. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is huge. I've noticed no one will stay sober for sobriety's sake alone, you know? No one will stay sober mm-hmm. for really anything external to themselves. It's the inner depth of meaning and purpose to the sobriety and the recovery process that keeps a person going. So, yeah, it's like the kicker. And I think, too, one of the big missing elements, we put so much pressure on recovery and what you have to do to stay sober that for most programs, they don't get to the why until months or years down the road when really it should be that conversation should begin right away. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, And then just looking at... Yeah, just looking at, you know, recovering the psyche through emotions, I mean, it's very similar to connecting with the true self and cognitive restructuring. And I'll just share the definition here. And um, to recover the psyche from emotions is also a daily practice of emotional tracking with the intention to listen and learn from the emotional guidance system. This process includes allowing oneself to feel their emotions, understand them, and find healthy ways to release and optimize them. I love that. And I think, too, also letting, I mean, I've I've learned in different self-development classes as well, we are not the emotions, but it is a huge guidance system to let us know where we're at, if we are connected to the consciousness and in alignment with that, mm-hmm. that your emotions will t- definitely tell you where you're at. Yeah, instead of, you know, being stuck in the emotional intoxication and operating from that point, it's a lot more powerful to understand that emotions are messengers. They are communicating with us, and they teach and they guide us. They obviously give depth to our human experience. It would be be robots if we didn't have emotions. And when we (laughs) understand that, you know that we can separate ourselves from our emotions and observe them and learn from them and really work with them as opposed to being stuck inside, again, that emotional intoxication, inside that bubble that blinds us to what's going on. That's when we become reactive. That's when we, you know, become obsessive and compulsive when we're stuck inside of that. But when we come out from, we come out from that emotion and we understand that there is a purpose to that, we can start to develop mm-hmm. our emotional intelligence and our emotional maturity. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Well, we've got two minutes left, and I really want to um, ask you, what's one thing that you can share with the listeners that has made an impact that you feel that has helped other people you included on this journey? Well, I guess in just in general, <laughs> um, I mean, I, I would say, you know, when it comes to recovering the psyche after addiction, it's imperative to incorporate some kind of personal development, self-help, self-improvement plan into your plan. Don't just stop mm-hmm. at the recovery work. I do think that there's a feeling effect that happens when you're in the recovery bubble and stretching out and understanding how to evolve as a human being and how to improve yourself on all levels is the whole point of addiction. It's not about recovering from a problem. It's about an opportunity to transform on all levels. And there's so many programs out there to do that these days. Yes, absolutely. There's so much, yeah, definitely. Uh, well, getting to that, we want anybody that's listening, you can reach um, Deanne at www.beingtruetoyou.com um, if you want to know more about what she's doing and um, the different things that she's that the, her company is also offering um, to get in touch with her at that. And I will have all the contact information at the end of the video as well. So, Deanne, thank you so much for being on the show today. There's such a wealth of information um, in regards to this topic that, you know, this would take more than a month to really go over. But for all of you that are listening, she will be back on the show on Monday um, because we weren't able to do the show last Thursday. So, And that topic will be recreating reality after addiction. So thank you so much for being on the show today. We really greatly appreciate it. As, again, such a wealth of information that really um, changes the lives of people. And so we thank you for that. 
Wonderful. Thank you so much, uh, Linda. Thank you to all the listeners. We'll see you on Monday. Yeah, thank you. And thank you for all the listeners who joined us out there today and the ones who will be joining us afterwards on via YouTube. We thank you so much. Please follow, subscribe, comment, and like us. And we'll see you on Monday, July 20th, again for the next show, Recreating Reality After Addiction with Deanne Addison. So again, thank you so much. And thank you, Deanne. And we'll see you on Monday. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.